It is the fourth Sunday in Lent. And the epistle is taken from Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Galatians, chapter 4. Brethren, it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise, which things are said by an allegory. For these are the two testaments, the one from Mount Sinai, regendering re re unto bondage, which is Agar. For Sinai is a mountain of Arabia, which hath affinity to that Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But that Jerusalem, which is, a, which is above, is free, which is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For many are the children of the desolate, more than of her that hath a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born according to the flesh persecuted him that was after the spirit. So also it is now. But what saith the scriptures? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free, by the freedom wherewith Christ has made us free. And please stand for the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6. At that time Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is that of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw the miracles which he did on them that were diseased. Jesus therefore went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Pasch, the festival day of the Jews, was near at hand. When Jesus therefore had lifted up his eyes, and seen that a very great multitude cometh to him, he said to Philip, Whence shall we buy bread, that these may eat? And this he said to him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennyworth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every man may take a little. One of his, one of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, saith to him, There is a boy here that hath five barley loaves and two fishes. But what are these among so many? And then Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. The men therefore sat down, in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to them that were set down in like manner, also the fishes, as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, lest they be lost. They gathered up therefore and filled twelve baskets with fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above to them that had eaten. Now those men, when they had seen what a miracle Jesus had done, said, This is of a truth the prophet that is come into the world. Jesus therefore, when he knew that they would come to take him by force and make him king, fled again into the mountain himself alone. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So just a few considerations for today. Today, Leitare Sunday. Typically, the, the color of vestments would be rose. For today is a, is a joyful day in the midst of a penitential season. The colors are normally rose, but you can also wear violet. I don't have a rose set with me, so we'll make two. But it is a joyful day, not only historically in the church, but also we share in this joy of what happened only a few short days ago. A few short days ago. Now, us as Catholics, we strive and we, we want to belong to, we must belong to, the one true, holy, and apostolic church. 
and we strive to be as obedient as possible in all things that we can to the Holy Father. The only reason why we are saying Mass here in a home, rather than in our local church, is because we cannot attend that Mass in that local church with good conscience. Because of the abuses that happen in that church, because of the abuses of that liturgy that they call the Nova Soda Mass. That is why we cannot attend that church, because that Mass was wrought. It was written up by the help of six Protestants. As Archbishop Lefebvre called it, it is a bastard Mass. It is, as we read in the epistle, it is like that woman, that son that was born from the bondswoman, that was taken out of flesh, that is, out of wedlock. That is what the Nova Soda Mass is to a Catholic. It is an abomination before God, and that is why we do not attend that Mass, and we must reject that Mass and oppose it. But now the Holy Father has called together, not together, but has requested all the bishops to join him in doing something that Our Lady has asked him to do 90, 93 years ago. <clears throat> Pope Pius XII did not consecrate Russia properly. He did not request any of the bishops to follow him, nor did he properly consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Pope John Paul II did not fulfill that request in 1980, I believe it was 84, um, I might be mistaken, but it was in the 80s when uh, Pope John Paul II attempted to consecrate, or at least they, that's what the Universal Church said at the time, was the consecration of Russia, and in which it was not. We did not properly fulfill the request of Our Lady. But now the Holy Father, Pope Francis, who is a wicked man, has finally decided to do, do what Our Lady asked. And as good Catholics, this is something that we must do, this is something we must believe in, we must follow, that it truly did happen. He truly did consecrate Russia, and we must rejoice with the Holy Father in this. It is our goal one day to be fully united and fully submissive to the Holy Father when he converts. Now, when it comes to when the, Holy, when the Holy Father obeys God and obeys Our Lady in doing what He is supposed to do, we can rejoice with that and follow that. But when the Holy Father goes against God and His commandments and tries to, to tell us we must say the Novo Sordo Mass and, and, and follow along with the heresies that are contained in its code of canons, we must reject those and stay away from those. We have no right to ever disobey the Holy Father. The only way in which we now disobey Him by not attending the Novus Ordo is because He is disobeying God. Because Christ is His authority. No man on earth is the Pope's authority. Only Christ. Because the Pope is the visible head of the mystical body of Christ here on earth. And so when the Pope follows with the commandments of God, we follow him. When the Pope follows the wishes of the devil, we do not follow him. So what, ha what took place just a few short days ago, two days ago on Friday, was a historical event in the church, something that has never, ever happened throughout the church, in which the Holy Father called together all of the bishops of the world to join him in any singular act. This has never happened. This is truly historic in which the Holy Father truly did fulfill the request of Our Lady of Fatima when she asked the Holy Father to consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart in union with all the bishops throughout the world. Now I'd like to point out if this consecration of Russia had happened 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 70 years ago. 
we would not be able to say with certainty that almost all the bishops joined him with, with, with visible evidence. And it's only because of this so-called pandemic that most cathedrals, most churches, most parishes are live streaming their daily masses. <clears throat> and so also what was included was the consecration of Russia was live streamed or at least videoed by most of these parishes. And so those who say that those who dare to to deny our lady this who 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 say that you know there was no immediate miracle that happened after the consecration so therefore it's, it didn't happen or who say that the pope did not command all of the bishops to join him in in in, in doing this these are all naysayers and, and 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 almost like the pharisees we cannot demand our lady to do anything she takes what she wants she uses what material she has and she uses it how she likes <clears throat> And she usually takes those who are the lowest to do her bidding. <clears throat> so when the Pope, when the Holy Father, it is not his job nor his place to, nor, 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 nor should he ever command all of the bishops to do anything. This has never happened in the church, and so it is, it is proper for him to request them to do that. Now, as, as true... Um, as true um, apostles, who, who, who you know, th those bishops that have that ap apostolic succession, those ordinary bishops. When the when the Holy Father asks you to do something in normal times, you do it. If it's not a sin, if it's not contrary to the laws of God, you do it. As proper Catholics, as true Catholics, we 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 must desire to do whatever the Pope wishes us to do, whether it's to move pile of rocks from one side of the Vatican to the other. It doesn't matter. As true Catholics, we must wish to do that. It is only when it's against God in His commandments that we reject. <clears throat> and so those naysayers that say He did not command, they are wrong and they are false. And there's video evidence. You can Google just about any diocese and just type in consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Russia. And you almost find, I, I would say you're, you'll be hard pressed to find uh, dioceses anywhere in which they don't even, they, whether they don't mention it or they don't do anything, just about all of them do. <clears throat> and some say that this was not a proper consecration of Russia because in the, in the, in the consecration form it says that the, 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 we, we consecrate to the Immaculate Heart of Mary humanity, especially Russia and Ukraine. In the letter the Holy Father sent out on Wednesday, April or March 23rd, he sent a, he sent out a letter to all of the bishops, explaining what was going to happen on the 25th. And in this letter, he says, I, "I I intend on March 25th to consecrate to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, humanity, and Russia, and Ukraine." It is very clear that, that he is specifically consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Some naysayer, naysayers will say that because he mentions Ukraine, it is not the proper consecration of Russia. I must remind you that 93 years ago, Ukraine was part of Russia. The capital city of Ukraine was proper Russian territory. It is also a Russian-speaking uh, city. That is the common language there. <clears throat> so, there, there are many proofs that this truly was the consecration requested by Our Lady of Fatima. And as such, we must rejoice in that fact that it did happen. And we must not demand of Our Lady a miracle immediately following it. We must not put any conditions that Our Lady must have fulfilled or that must have happened before this consecration could have happened. Some say because the world is not at its what we don't we think the world is not at its worst. I truly believe it is. Look at the children in any school. You can say 
your, even your local Catholic school, the children themselves, where are their morals? Where is their guidance? Where is their compass? It is gone. They don't even believe in God, if they even think there is a God. That is the compass. That is our gauge how bad it really is. We don't have to be killing people. No, kill the morals. Kill the, the innocence of the children. That is the greatest evil possible. <clears throat> so we must not put any conditions on Our Lady as to what must happen or what could have happened. When Our Lady appeared to the three children at Fatima, Jacinta and Lucia could hear and see Our Lady. But Francisco, he could only see Our Lady, he could not hear her. Lucia and Jacinta had to translate to him what she said because he could not hear her. And that's because him, as a little boy, had not prayed his rosary properly with full attention and devotion. And that's why he was not able to hear her, yet he was able to see her. So likewise, we must not demand any miracle of Our Lady instantly to prove that this truly happened. <clears throat> So now that it has happened, now what? Now what do we do? Well, when Our Lady appeared, she appeared to the three children and she, she asked them to pray. To pray the Holy Rosary. To make the five first Saturdays. <clears throat> because this consecration happened, does that mean we, have to, we don't do that anymore? Does that mean we're done you know, with the five first Saturdays and because the message has already been fulfilled? The answer is no. no we don't stop. We keep going. Because there's still sin in our world, there will still be sin in our world. Even when Our Lady's Immaculate, when, when, when her triumph comes, there still will be sin in the world. It won't be as prevalent, it won't be as bold, it won't be as open, but it'll be hidden behind doors. There still will be sin. So we must still pray for those conversions. We must still pray for humanity, as Our Lady asked at Fatima. She did ask for the children to pray for the conversion of humanity, but specifically for the consecration of Russia. <clears throat> so, but why, why did Our Lady request five first Saturdays? Why does she request the children to pray the rosary, to attend mass, and to spend at least 15 minutes with her? As a mother, she requested them to spend 15 minutes with her, not just meditating loosely but to spend that time with her meditating on her on her on her the mysteries of the rosary in relation to her why five it is five because it is against the five offenses committed against her immaculate heart the first offense against her immaculate heart in reparation is blasphemies against her immaculate conception those who blaspheme her, who blaspheme that she possibly could not have been born without sin, without that stain of original sin. And the second reason for the offenses against her Immaculate Heart, those, those, those offenses against her perpetual virginity. There are many who argue that, I wouldn't say, but the, yeah, there's, there's quite a number of people that would argue that because in scriptures it says, mainly the Protestants, who, who, who the Bible thumpers, who read literally the Bible and interpret it into their own destruction, as the scripture states. And they say that, well, in the scriptures it says that Mary had not known man before she conceived our Lord. And therefore, it means that, according to my interpretation, that later on she could have had another child with St. Joseph. It's possible because it doesn't state here that, that she never had relations. That is false. That is wrong. It is a sin against her 
perpetual virginity. It doesn't even make sense. Why would Our Lady, who had the Son of God, she, she would not dare. That most pure tabernacle. And the third offense against her Immaculate Heart. Those offenses against the divine maternity, refusing at the same time to receive her as the mother of mankind. Those who refuse her, her true motherhood, her true motherhood for all of us. She truly is our mother. Not only our mother, but she truly is the mother of the divine. And the fourth, those who seek publicly to implant in the hearts of children indifference, disrespect, and even hate for this Immaculate Mother. Those Protestants, again, who hate Our Lady. They truly hate her because they are, at least the hardcore Protestants, who know what they're doing, especially Luther, especially Calvin, those main leaders of, these, of the Protestants, and I would say even the Protest, most Protestant ministers today. I'm, I'm sure that I'm not saying that every single Protestant, those that just go to, to, to church service on Sundays because that's the way they were raised, I'm sure there are many souls there that don't know or are confused, and they would convert if they had the, the opportunity. But there are many who are hardened in their disbelief, they are hardened in their sins, and who openly disrespect her and who deny her the honor which is due to her and so they subvert the children. Then they say and they mock us for adoring Our Lady. We do not adore Our Lady. Adoration is, is due only to God. <clears throat> but we do honor her as our mother, because she is the mother of mankind and the mother of our Lord. And fifthly, for the offenses against, for those who revile her directly in her sacred images. There are cases happening even today, people defacing statues of Our Lady outside of churches because of that hatred of Our Lady, because of that hatred and it is, it's, it's, it's spurned on by the devil because Our Lady is the one who will crush his head. If you open a, a King James Bible, if you open a New American Bible, if you open any of those modernist Bibles that have been destroyed and rewritten to fulfill their own special needs, then you can turn to Genesis 3.15. What are you going to see? You're going to see that they changed the words from, And she shall crush his head. And the serpent shall lie in wait, and she shall crush his head. They change it to read, and he shall crush his head, or he shall bruise his head, or, or, or even they'll put she but bruise his head. What is this? This is hatred for the mother of our Lord. Because she will crush Satan's head, and she is the reason... He said, non serviam, I will not serve, because I will not serve that woman. Never. She is the slayer of the demons. So let us turn to Our Lady now, especially more than ever, and to pray for the Holy Father's conversion. Now that he has finally fulfilled her wishes in consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, let us implore her to turn his heart now back to the true faith and with God's graces and through her intercession he will he is ripe for conversion but another thing we can do also is to, to prepare our own soul not only not not only do we pray for the Holy Father but but we also like in the in the fasting for Lent not only do we fast to the body but we must also fast from sin we must also have that spiritual combat with our soul and put it right with God. <clears throat> if if we cannot fix our own if we cannot fix our own house, 
we must not point to other houses. Like in, in yesterday's gospel, the, the scribes and Pharisees brought the woman before our Lord and accused her of adultery and, and, and reminded our Lord of the, of the law of Moses that stated that uh, those, those that commit adultery are to be stoned to death. And so our Lord told them, though he without sin cast the first stone. And he wrote in the sand their sins, and they went away. So now is the time for us to remove the beam from our soul, rather than to point out the splinter in the other's soul. And a good way to do that is to go on retreat, to take a, a, take a, a time away from the world, the world which is noisy beyond all measure. There is every step, everywhere you go, you go into a grocery store, you go into a restaurant, you, it, it's a subway, there's always music blasting, there's always noise, there's always movement, there's always confusion going on. Everywhere in the world you go. If you're just on the road, it's confusion. People yelling and screaming at each other and m making gestures, usually not very kind. Um, but it's, it's confusion. And in that kind of a world, we don't have a chance. We don't have a chance to step aside and to let our Lord speak to us. We don't have a chance. It is a time, in, now is the time in which we need to make a retreat at that time in which we set ourselves aside from the world for a short period of time, that's all it takes to let the world disappear and to focus only on our Lord to focus only on our, our, the reset of our soul which is what a retreat does it helps us to, not only does it remove the distractions of the world but it puts us in a place in which there is silence, there is quiet around us, and we are able to hear our Lord speak. When our Lord speaks, He does not scream, He does not yell, He does not bang drums or whistles or blow whistles, but rather He speaks as the wind blows, quietly, silently. And if the world around you, and if, you, if, you're, if your thoughts are loud, you will not hear Him. You will not hear what he's asking of you. You will not hear what he wants of you. You will not hear that he loves you. Because your mind is already running and racing and is loud. <clears throat> so do try to find the time to get on retreat. To go on retreat. It is, it is necessary, especially in our day and age. Um, I know for us at the seminary, we, we try to put on as many retreats as possible. I know we have a retreat starting tomorrow at the seminary. It's a five-day retreat. And then also we have retreats in, in uh, June and July and in September and October. Usually the last full week of, of June is the women's retreat. And the, last full week, or the first full week of July is the men's retreat. And likewise, in, in September and October, the last full week of September is the women's retreat, and the first full week of October is the men's retreat. So do, do, do think about this, do, do dwell on this, to, to try to get on a retreat sometime. It is I, I would say it is necessary for anyone between the age of 17 and 120 to go on a retreat. Between 17 and 18, depending on the maturity level, but definitely anyone beyond 18 should attend a retreat. And so let us turn to Our Lady and ask her for that help, but also to ask her and to beg her intercession in the, in the Holy Father's conversion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.